All right, so we're going to talk about simplifying radical expressions, all right, that uh, like square roots. Um, the actual check mark with the line over top is called a radical. And um, I, I've been teaching math for 35 years, so there, I just kind of understand how students think and what method is a little easier on the brain in order to solve. <laughs> and I'm gonna teach you a slightly different method than what they cover in the pace for how to solve these, but it will work on every problem that you have with, the, um, with simplifying these. All right, so let me, let me show it to you real quick. For instance, <clears throat> what is the square root of three times the square root of three? All right, in your head you might think, oh, well, I know what that is. That's the square root of nine, and the square root of nine is three, okay? What's the square root of seven times the square root of seven? So, well, seven times seven is 49, and the square root of 49 is seven. Okay, follow with me now. What's the square root of x times the square root of x? The square root of x squared, which is x. What if I just go right from here, skip this step altogether, and just jump right to here. Do you see a pattern? Square root of three times the square root of three. The three pops out from under the radical and becomes three. Square root of seven times square root of seven, the seven pops out and becomes seven, okay? So I could do the square root of, oh, let's, let's do square root of 13 times square root of 13 and immediately get 13. Okay, square root of b times the square root of b, the b pops out. I don't need to multiply it and then do the square root of that. So if we take something like the square root of 8, what I encourage students to do is write it as all the prime numbers that make up that number. So 8 is 2 times 2 times 2. Now as soon as you do that, you see that, oh, I have two of these that are the same. Anytime you have two radical terms that are the same, then the number that's underneath will pop out, okay? That's what I call it, popping out. You won't find that in any algebra book. That's a Mr. Anger term. All right, so the two pops out, two, square root of two would be the answer, okay? Let's follow that method now to solve these three, four problems that I have up here, okay? This black produces a lot of junk on the board, so I'm going to try the blue here, all right? Square root of 75 is 25, which is square root of 5 times the square root of 5 times the square root of 3. So you can think of it as 25 times 3 is 75. You could also think of it as 15 times 5 is 75, okay? So I've done all the prime numbers that make up 75. Now notice these two are the same, square root of 5 and square root of five, so the five pops out, and I get five square root of three, okay? 200. Now, a shortcut is if you know that a, a square root of 100 is 10, yes, that's what the pace is talking about. But I'm gonna show you the longer method, okay? So this would be like two times 100, which is 10 times 10, so I have square root of two times square root of two, times square root of five, times square root of two, times square root of five, okay? So this two, 10 is five times two, and this 10 is five times two. Now, let's see how many combinations I can come up with. I have square root of two times square root of two, so a two pops out front. I have a square root of five times a square root of five, so a five pops out. Okay, so we, those are not under the radical anymore, they're whole numbers, but I still have a square root of five left, excuse me, a square root of two left. <laughs> so the answer then would be simplifying that 10 square root of two. Now would you have gotten the same if you had said the square root of two times the square root of 100, and then said, oh, the square root of 100 is 10. You would have gotten 10 square root of two. And that's the whole point, okay? That's what I love about math, is there are multiple ways of doing it and getting the right answer, okay? As long as you do it correctly. Um, unlike English and history, where there's so much you know, opinion and uh, exceptions to the rule, there's no exceptions to the rule in math, okay? It's cool. 
So yes, this method might work and some of you might feel comfortable you know, just jumping right to that and it's a little bit faster for some. But here's what I like about this method. It always works for every single problem, okay? Let's take 72. You know that 72 is nine times eight. So nine is the square root of three times the square root of three. Eight is square root of two times square root of two times square root of two. So the three pops out and I get three. The two pops out and I get two and then I'm left with one square root of two, okay? <clears throat> These are all being multiplied together. So the three times two is six, six square root of two. We're done. See how easy that is? Nice and fast. All right, 54 is six times nine, which is square root of two times square root of three times square root of three times square root of three. And then we have a to the third and b to the fifth, okay? And these are under radicals. Well, you know what, let me show you what this would be, okay? Square root of A, square root of A, square root of A. B, 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 B. This is the long way, okay? So the square root of three pops out and I get nine. I still have square root of six, okay? Here I have an A that pops out, but I still have a square root of A under the radical. And then it looks like I have two B's that pop out and I still have a square root of B underneath. Okay, so now I put all the real parts together out front, which is 9A, B times B is B squared, and then square root of 6AB. I guess I forgot to mention here that when you do have two radicals left over, like the square root of 2 and the square root of 3 are left over, okay, you multiply the 2 times the 3 together and you go ahead and get the 6. And so the same thing happens in the last step. Since these are both under the radical, the square root of a and that square root of b, then I multiply them together, a, b, put it with the 6, and they all stay. So we have one radical with whatever's left over, and then anything that pops out goes out front. Okay, <clears throat> in uh, a previous lesson though, you saw that the, we say that the, the index here is two, all right? If we don't see it written, we know that it's two. And we could write these as fractions, three, three over two, okay? Uh, I don't wanna go down that trail because I think that's gonna confuse you. So uh, let's just leave it at that. Study the examples in the, uh, in the pace, and hopefully you'll do well on pages 18 and 19.